And today, today we are going to talk about uh, the problems with saying no and why this is so hard for some of us. So, uh, you know, this is Monday Morning Mojo, an opportunity for all of us to, you know, really, I think, get clear about our intentions for the week, for us to have an opportunity to explore some things that will really open our minds and help us, you know, stretch our thinking and live on a higher level, live a bigger life. And so today, when we talk about this, with this topic, uh, it's, it's appropriate because I believe that those of us who struggle with saying no are really limiting ourselves and robbing ourselves of our joy. And so we're going to talk a little bit about why it might be hard for some of us. And then I'm going to share some tips that may help you. And I just want to kick it off this morning by saying, hi, my name is Anna Gibbs, and I sometimes have a problem saying no to. Right, so this is really, I think, a, a topic that can resonate with all of us on different levels, and I think that um, you know many of us can say we're maybe people pleasers or achievers or drivers, and so we want to be involved in things, and we know we have a lot to contribute. We know that we have you know resources and talent and experience to give, and we're helpful, and all of these things are positive. And then there's, for some of us, this other side of our behavior profile that might be fearful of letting someone down, might be, um, you know, concerned that someone might think we're not capable or willing. So for some of us, saying no can turn up a lot of negative emotions. And I hope that this morning's message is that saying no can be empowering and that saying no is not a bad thing. And so let's jump in it. So as always, I'm going to encourage you to take some notes and talk to me if you have questions or ahas. Um, and that's what really makes this uh, 25, 30 minutes together so powerful. Um, so as I've been saying, we're going to talk about what is the problem with saying no and how we can get more comfortable with it. I do think, as I was just uh, uh, sharing with you, that a lot of people can really feel guilty about saying no. Can anyone relate to that at times that you feel guilty saying no? Oh, yeah, oh, everybody, okay. So, um, and it can turn up or, or bring up some feelings of anxiety for us, maybe even, you know, a little fear. And so we wanna really pull this apart today and unpack this. Um, and, I, and I wonder for some of us if the fear is, is around conflict, if the fear could be around what people think of you, um, or thinking any differently or less of your capability. Um, and I think that we all have these identity stories, right? We have these identity stories we tell ourselves. We have these, these conversations in our head about reality. Um, most of the time, it's a little far from the actual uh, reference of reality. Uh, and so we, we say yes to a lot of things. We say yes to probably too much. And, um, and that really, I think for a lot of us at the moment, when we say yes, even though there's this little voice in our head saying we should probably say we can't do this, uh, at the moment, it's, it's relieving a little pressure. Who can relate to that? That at the moment, by saying yes, even though there's this voice in the back of your head, you're avoiding some immediate discomfort right? Because by just saying, yes, I'll do it. And then saying, I'll, you know, to yourself, I'll figure it out later, how I'm going to fit it in, or how I'm going to figure it out. At least at the moment, you're alleviating the stress and the pressure of having to tell that person no. And maybe that story in your head is all well, the stuff we just mentioned, right? That they're going to think that you're not helpful, or you're letting them down, or you're not capable. And so for a minute, we give ourselves a little reprieve, but then very quickly we realize that we're putting more on us. And so what is the long-term effect of that? What is the long-term effect of that? Um, and eventually it can learn, it can lead to burnout. Now, I believe that most of my audience usually are women. Uh, and of course, I love all of the men in our lives. And uh, 
Uh, but I'm just going to say, you know, from my point of view, as a woman, as a professional woman, as a, a woman who has a family and a lot of responsibilities, you know, this can really be a, a real challenge for us because with it, now we're getting asked to do things probably in a lot of areas of our life. And that can really start to take its toll. And as I said, lead to burnout and lead to adrenal fatigue and other issues for us, you know, as well. So this is really, I think this conversation this morning is a form of self-care. So write that down. Saying no might be a form of self-care. So look, I admit it, you know, we're programmed, I think socially we're programmed to want to be helpful, supportive. We um, are taught to be aware of other people's feelings, right? We are, we are socialized to be caregivers, some of us more than others. And so, you know, what's happening is we're putting everyone else's needs first. And instead of really taking a moment to say, I know it's right for me. OK, and so I just want to you know, point out that when you say yes to something, you're probably saying no to something else. So if you're saying yes to everyone else, what are you saying no to that might be important for you? You might be saying no to more free time. You might be saying no to more sleep. You might be saying no to uh, being able to enjoy dinner out. Right. So you have to be really cognizant of that, that whatever you say yes to there's always cause and effect. So you might be saying no to something else. So when you say yes to doing work that you don't love, for instance, right? What is that doing for you if you're not enjoying what you're doing? If you're saying yes to um, doing anything for someone that doesn't align with your values, does that take a toll on you over time? Okay, so I think that, you know, what I'd like to do is go through some tips to help you with this and to give you some tools so that you can feel more empowered uh, to be able to know what's right for you. And that's really what this boils down to, right? It's about knowing what's right for you. And it's about knowing, you know, how to fit that into your value system, how to fit that into the vision of your life. So the first tip I want to give you is just that know what is right for you, know what your values are, and basically to know what the vision is for your life. So if I'm clear about that, and I have a lot of, you know, I'm in touch with my values, I'm in touch with what is what I like to call my inner GPS. I'll know right away when a request comes in front of me, whether small or big, that doesn't fit in right? It doesn't line up with my values. It doesn't line up with the goals I have. And, and I'm sure so many of you can relate to this, right? Because we're all talented, driven people. We're involved in a lot of great things. And how many of you have been asked to participate in something or sit on a board or work on a project or maybe start a business or take on something, right? And you're like, oh, <laughs> It feels good at first, right? And that's another thing that gets in our way sometimes because it feels good to be recognized, right? How many of you can admit it feels good when people need you? Yeah, right? So that's another topic we can talk about, you know, being, uh, being in this, you know, need to be needed kind of state, right? But really, I mean, we have a lot to give. So it would make sense that people are attracted to that. It would make sense that we get these requests coming to us, right? Yet you can't say yes to it all. And if you did, where would it take you, right? So I've many times over my life, I've had to take a moment and look at whatever that request was and say, okay, if I say yes to this, where does it lead me? Does it actually enhance and stretch and grow the vision I have for my life professionally and personally? Well, then, okay, even though I didn't see this coming, I'm going to say yes to that. But if it's not, if it's going to derail me, detract or distract me from what I, I'm here to do, then why would I want to say yes, right? And we have to be willing to look at that person and say, I really appreciate the offer and I'm going to have to say no. Right. So it's really not the first tool or tip I want to give you is to be clear about what you want. Be clear about your values. Be clear about the vision for your career, for your life, so that you'll know when something shows up, if it's right for you or not. OK, so uh, that's true about your relationships. That's true about every aspect of your life. 
The, the second thing I'm going to put on your list, which we've, we've danced around this, but I'll just put it here now in a little a package with a bow, is you have to know the implication of saying yes. So that's what I just described, right? Take a time out, consider what is being asked of you. And, and you know, here's the other thing about this. Many of us will justify saying yes to a lot of little things, right? Some of us will say, well, it's not gonna take me a lot of time. It's not a big deal. I could do it in my sleep, right? Yet, what are the implications of that? Because, you know, a raindrop in a bucket may not seem like a lot until the bucket is full, right? And so all these little requests, five minutes here, 10 minutes there, is it really only costing you five or 10 minutes? Probably not, because a lot of times it's going to take us two or three times longer just to get back to where we need to be. It can distract us and, and, and bring us to something else. And it just adds up over time and leads to exhaustion and burnout, right? So you have to be willing to say no to the little stuff too. And, I, and something that we talk about in our world with our leadership team as well, is that you know the good intention, the well-meaning intention of wanting to be helpful, uh, could also be robbing someone else of their opportunity to shine, right? So if you're working within a team of people or even in your family dynamics sometimes, right? If you're always willing to say, I got it, I'll do it, I got it, I'll do it, it's okay, it's only five minutes, I know what I need to do, it's not gonna take me a lot of time, da 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 da, da. There might be someone standing right behind you who's like, okay. <laughs> Right. And it might have been their opportunity to develop a skill set, develop something in their leadership for them to shine. And so we have to be aware of that, too. Um, and so that that perpetual need to be needed can get in the way of not only ourselves, but sometimes other people's development, too. So, Jill, I see you have something in the chat. Just want to glance at that real quick before we go on. Um, getting clarity on personal goals direction is an exercise. Yes, it is an exercise unto itself. A lot of which we've talked about here in the last 18 months on Mojo. And if you go back to the Facebook page in the file section, I have an exercise on identifying your values. And there's other tools in there around goal setting too. And if I can help any of you, um, you know, I'm always available. You can schedule some time with me by visiting calendly.com slash Anna Gibbs. And you can set up some time with me and we can talk a little bit about, you know, personal goal setting, coaching, whatever you might need. Great point. All right, let's go to the third thing I wanna to add to your list today. Um, and it sounds so simple, yet it's not easy. So number three, realize that saying no is actually okay. Realize that saying no is okay. You might have to practice that. You might have to say it out loud as an affirmation. Saying no is okay. Um, and and the, the, again, the challenge for a lot of us is that we think it's not okay. And it is, right? Because, you know, what happens if you don't put your oxygen mask on first, right? That's why I believe that these topics are about self-care way more than the massage and the bubble bath and the yoga and the meditation, right? We have to know our boundaries and we have to be clear about them and we can't be afraid to to make other people aware of them too and so it's really i think important for us to get comfortable with the fact that we can say no and that most of the time i'm going to i'm going to say 99% of the time whatever you are fearing about the other person's reaction is not true if you're worried they're going to be upset with you they're not if you're worried they're going to think anything negative about you, they don't, okay? They are going to go on to the next resource or person to help them figure this out, right? And, and so being comfortable with saying no is, is really the, the powerful tool. And listen, if it's right for you and you really feel like this is an opportunity, then say yes, right? This is, this is not about just being programmed to not be helpful or say no all the time. It's about getting clear about what you should say yes to and what you shouldn't, okay? And I think that it, it's also, um, you know, really important for us to, to also be okay um, with being less accessible. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. It's okay to not be so available. It's okay to not be so accessible. Doesn't mean that you're rude. It means that you're focused. 
And it means that you are really working in your strength zone and you're working with priorities, right? So I've talked about this sometimes in the, in the past too. Um, there's this uh, principle that we know to be true, the 80-20 rule, right? The Pareto principle, which says that all things are not created equal, basically, right? All the things on your to-do list, all the activities you have in front of you, they're not all created equal. Some things must go to the top of the list. And it's it's usually a short list of two or three things, right? That's why we say it's in the 20% of your activities. Those are the things you must be clear about. And you must know what's in your 20%. And that what, those activities should be protected at all costs. Right. So I can't say yes to you if it means it's going to jeopardize what's in my 20 percent. And I'm OK with that. Because if I'm not focused on my 20 percent, I'm not getting the results that either I'm hired to do or that I intend to have or that's going to move me forward. And if I can't stay in that lane, I believe personally, I can't be of the greater good to more people. So this is not being selfish, because if I say yes to everything that comes across my desk, metaphorically, and, and, and I start to stretch myself too thin, how does that help me help you? And, and at what cost to me, right? Physically, emotionally. And so that's why this is such a brave topic. And, and you know, that's another thing about this is getting brave enough to say, this is what I need. And the reason why I need it is because of all the things I may have just mentioned. So you're actually being of greater good and higher service to the people around you when you are clear about your priorities and you are clear about your boundaries and you're not so accessible and so willing. Because again, as I, everything I just mentioned, right, you might even give someone else an opportunity to rise up in their own leadership. Right. So I believe that as you know, we grow and we get more and more focused, we have an opportunity to help other people develop skills that will help them to be more successful and more focused. So realize that no is OK and be comfortable with being less accessible. Those are some things I would would put down. Now, the process of saying no itself, I'm just going to say this. Keep it simple. And make it quick especially for those of you who really struggle with this, right? Because what I find happens is you keep talking and you wind up convincing yourself to do it anyway. And it sounds something like this, you know, I'm really busy. I wish I could. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden you start saying things like, well, all right, here's the thing. I could probably help you with that in on Friday. Let me let me figure out a few things on my calendar and let me get to that on Friday. And it probably won't take me that long. And it's really not that big a deal. And I'll be sure to do it for you. And da, da. So here's the other thing I want you to write down. We show people how to treat us. So what do you think will happen? As, as you make yourself more and more available? And what do you think will happen when you first start to say no and then you just wind up taking it on anyway? What is that message to that other person? That I can do this all the time, all day long to you. I'm gonna keep asking you, you're gonna say yes anyway, right? And it, it may even be happening on a very subconscious level. I don't want you to think that the people around you are intending to manipulate you or inundate you or anything. No, it's just, it's just behavior. It's just behavior. And so if you show people that they can do that to you, they will all day long, right? So you have to be aware of that. So I think it's simple and, and, and much easier to just keep it simple, I should say. Uh, so basically the script sounds like this. You know, Jill, I really appreciate you coming to me with this opportunity. Or Aaron, I really appreciate you asking me for help. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to say no. Um, it's just not something that I can commit to right now. But I do appreciate you. And stop talking. And if you have to, walk away. Right? Or say, and now I really have to go, but thanks. Right? Because if you don't, you're going to wind up taking it off some of you anyway. So keep it simple. Just thank them. Tell them that you appreciate them thinking about you and you're just not available. That's it. I just, I can't make the commitment, right? And, and you know, I, I had to do that recently. Someone asked me to, 
to do a project through an organization that I'm on. And immediately I, you know, I like the person very much. I love the organization. It's not that I'm not capable of it. And of course, you know, I find myself saying yes. And then as I'm doing that, I'm having this conversation in my head. When are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? What do you, what is this? So finally I had to stop myself and say, you know, I, I have to say something as we're talking, I'm realizing that this is probably a much bigger commitment than I can make to you right now. And I know I just said that I could, but the truth is I really can't. Because if I say yes to this right now, I will give you 100% and wind up depleting myself somewhere else. And it's going to create a lot of stress. And it's not that I don't want to, I just really can't. And the person said, I understand completely. And that's it. And whatever that person thought about in their mind when they walked away from my conversation is none of my business. I don't want to go there, right? Because I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. So I, I, any ahas this morning? Am I talking to anyone who can relate to this? Any of you? Aaron, do you want to say something? I, say well, I mean, you, you know from my years of coaching with you that this is honestly one of my biggest opportunities in life is learning to say no and understanding that. And I I'm love not, you, Aaron, for your honesty here. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not a bad person because I can't say yes. And, and what you said that really resonates with me the most is I am the biggest habit of, of, oh, it'll only take me five minutes. Don't even worry about it. Cause it's just a minute and I can just do it. And I don't have to teach you how to do it. And, um, I fall into that trap. And, and like you said, I think I'm, I'm keeping other people obviously from being able to grow in their leadership, but I'm also causing so much anxiety for myself, knowing that these little things have to get done that I just don't, I don't need to make the time for It's not even that I don't have the time for it. It's that they're not things that I have to make the time for. So, you know, I've been working on that a lot over the last, you know, lifetime yeah. of working with you. And yes. I do Thank find that I'm making sure. a lot of improvements, but still need, you know, some guidance yeah. <laughs> and some work well on that. And thank you for sharing because you know other people can relate to you. Mm -hmm. You know that. And, um, and I think that um, we just have to realize like the other person's urgency is not necessarily yours and it's mm -hmm. okay. You know, and I know sometimes that's hard for us, right? Because we're like, well, this is really important to this person. They really, now don't get me wrong. Like we've had this conversation too, Aaron, right? Because we've yeah. worked together. Um, if it's in, so, so the things that are not in my 20%, might be in Aaron's because of the way we work together, right? Like Aaron may, because of her role is going to take stuff off my plate. So that, that's not what this is about. <laughs> like, don't no, go into the boss no, and be like, no. ah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is about all the other God a minutes, right? Yeah. Sarah, thank you. I see your hand is up too. Yes. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. This has so much resonance with me right now um, because of some family dynamic stuff that's going on. And I think that um, as your boundaries get healthier, um, other people then um, who don't want to see that change happen get um, like they really come at you. But I think it's still still really, really necessary to say, no, this is how much I can do or, you know, or I, I would love to do that, but I absolutely cannot do that right now. Um, and, and for me, I think, yeah, you really do have to focus on self-care because, uh, you know, um, your own oxygen mask first, um, because otherwise, you know, there are, there are people who will just suck all the oxygen out of the room and, um, for sure, and for that's sure. not a good situation to be in. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think, you know, what you, thank you for sharing, because it's really important for all of us too to put this into a context. that's not just professional. It's not just the work related request, right? It is the stuff that happens in friendships in relationships, in, in you know, uh, um, parent and, and child relationships, siblings, right? Like it is about getting clear about your boundaries and knowing what is going to be right for you or not. And you hit the nail on the head that as you get clearer about your uh, self and as you get clearer about your values and, and that road that you're on um, and your boundaries, and then you stand up for them and start to really articulate that, people around you are going to be confused <laughs> and people around you are going to um, maybe even get annoyed because they're not used to that. 
And so again, we show people how to treat us. So it's a matter of reconditioning and, and making people understand, you know, what is, is, is going to be, you know, within your ability to say yes and what's not. And, and another thing that's worth saying around this topic is don't apologize. I mean, it's okay to say, I really appreciate you thinking of me and I'm going to have to say no, right? But in, in nowhere in that did I say, I'm really sorry, but I have to say no, you know, like, and it, it's just making it so that people understand that you're comfortable with this. Um, because if you make it look like you feel bad, uh, they may come at you in a different way with that request, right? So I think that's important too. Um, one other thing that I will say that could be helpful for some of you, and, and you'll have to know when to use this appropriately, uh, sometimes